Dad sat on the front, por front porch reading a book. He had just finished a BLT, had a brain aneurysm, and died. Book, BLT, brain aneurysm, those are the three things that I remember from that day three years ago. Two days later, we congregate in the backyard, all his family and friends, to share stories about this man who we all got into a lot of trouble with. He was one of those suck the marrow out of life kind of guys, so there was a lot of stories to tell. Uncle Gardo and Gary, two of Dad's oldest best friends, sat around the picnic table that I had gotten him for Father's Day a few years earlier, telling story after story about countless nights spent at the Grandy Ballroom in downtown Detroit. Anybody out there know the Grandy? Yeah. They were telling stories about what it was like to be alive in the 70s in Detroit and in love with rock and roll. Hey, Gardo, remember that Who show, Gary said? How could I forget, Gardo said. He told me, Patty, this is when your dad went to Fair State, which is three hours across the, st across the state, and he didn't have a car, and it was winter. And Gary said he had this feeling and he was talking to Alice Cooper backstage. And he said, hang on a second, Alice. And he went out the stage door, looked down the alley, and there was my dad. He had hitchhiked three hours across Michigan in the snow because he couldn't miss the show. You see, this was a special show. We see all these lights here at Pickathon that are synced up with the music. But this was the very first time that a band was doing that. And, uh, and he could not miss it. So Gardo was in the back at the booth running the lights, uh, way back up in the top of this huge ballroom, when he said he saw a figure approaching him. He, he told me, this guy looked, out, looked like your dad, and so I called out, Weiss. And your dad responded, hey, Gardo, how you doing? And he had on this thick pea coat, and he was carrying a tweed suitcase. And Gardo asked him, what's in the suitcase? Denny? And my dad said, everything I need, man. It was 1986 and 94.7 WCRX, Detroit's classic rock station, was playing in our beige Ford Taurus station wagon. It was one of those station wagons that had the seat in the back that faced out the back window, which while I understand why they're no longer around, I wish they still existed. You could put so many kids in that car, but that day it was just me and dad just the two of us, August 6th, and we were heading north on US 23 to this place that I hadn't known yet, but that would grow to be just as special to me as it was to him, Pine Knob. And Pine Knob is this place that you can use to tell if people are really from Detroit. It's this amphitheater litmus test. They changed the name 17 years ago, but those in the know will always call it Pine Knob. See, Dad and I, we spent a lot of time together, just the two of us, before my little brother was born because my mom worked midnights, but this was special. We were going out. We were going to see the Monkees. They were my favorite band. It was their 20th anniversary tour. Uh, re and 20th anniversary reunion tour, which apparently means they're touring 20 years after they broke up. Um, but they played two shows at Pine Knob, which would end up being their two highest grossing shows of the whole tour, but none of that mattered that day. All that mattered is that it was me and Dad, and we were going to my first concert. So as we were driving there, Dad turned around and he looked at me and he said, you know, Patty, this is kind of like your first date. I was four. I looked at him in my most serious voice and I said, Dad, it's not that big a deal. Only it was. This would be our first time to Pine Now, but it certainly was not our last. We saw a countless concert there, including once when we saw Jimmy Buffett, when my mom was very pregnant with my sister, and this drunk dude tripped and stepped on her. And I saw my dad react in this way that I'd never seen before, this primal instinct of protecting his wife and unborn daughter while Margaritaville played in the background. Dad loved traveling as much as he loved music, and that's how we ended up at the New Orleans Jazz Fest. Mom and Dad went every other year for about 10 years, and in 2014, I was finally able to join them. So they made the drive with my sister from Detroit to New Orleans, making this stop in Biloxi, Mississippi, 
and the Shed Barbecue and Blues joint, where you would always stop and get a barbecue sandwich and listen to some blues before making your way to New Orleans. And I flew into Louis Armstrong International Airport, and the next morning, we made it to the festival. And within the first half hour, it started pouring rain. So Dad and I were huddled underneath this plastic bag, listening to this James Brown tribute band play Sex Machine, just like it was Cobo Hall in 1970. And I looked over at my dad, and he had the smile on his face that was as big as any smile that I had ever seen. Only a half hour in, and live music had already brought us pure joy. The next two days were filled with blues tent, jazz tent, gospel tent, hearing music that you can't hear anywhere outside of New Orleans, gospel choirs that are only in churches, the Treme Brass Band, uh, Mardi Gras Indians doing their thing. It was amazing. And even Jimmy Buffett was there again. That, those two days in New Orleans were some of the best days that we had. He died not shortly after. But that experience of experiencing live music with my dad is one that I'll always hold near. And now this year, my mom and my sister and I finally felt ready to go back to Jazz Fest again. And so we did, took that drive from Detroit to New Orleans, stopping in Biloxi. And we stopped at the shed. We ate our barbecue. We listened to the blues. And we took this little urn that I keep underneath my bed that has some of Dad's ashes in it. And we put some of them in the, in the bayou right there in the river so that he'd always be in this place that he loved so much. And we were leaving, we saw the owner of the shed and we let him know what we had just done. And he said, the river was blessed today. And so were we. So we were back in the backyard and we move to the front porch, this place that had become a shrine. All of his best friends, all of our best friends, his kids, his wife, Gary had brought his guitar, and Aaron, my best friend's husband, who had become dad's friend in his own right, he went into the living room and grabbed the old man's ukulele. And they played song after song on the front porch of bands that they had heard at the Grandy. It was amazing. I requested the wait by the band, and everybody took a deep breath and joined in. And I pressed record on the recorder on my phone, and everybody sang, take a load off, Fanny. Take a load for free. Take a load off, Fanny. And put the load right on me. The love in that room on that porch was palpable. And after we were done, I hit play to listen to the recording, except that there was nothing there. Five minutes were recorded of complete silence. There was only one explanation for why that would happen. Dad. He always said that there was nothing like a live show. We didn't need a recording. We were there. Thank you.